Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be making that soap with the bacon fat that you saw me render before. But I, you know, leaving it to me not to be content with just one thing, I've got to also add beer to this soap. So I'm going to make a beer bacon fat soap. <clears throat> now it's not going to be 100% bacon fat because if you make a bar of soap with just one type of lard um, it'll only impart that one property that it has and for bacon fat it's like a nice solid bar but it doesn't really lend a ton of foam so I'm gonna put some coconut oil in there as well and uh, maybe some palm kernel oil I haven't decided yet but anyway so first I gotta do the beer so um, I'm going to show you how to not reduce beer, but kind of get rid of the carbonation in beer. Otherwise, you cannot add lye to it. If you do, it's going to explode. So we've got to um, take the carbonation out of the beer first, and I'm going to do that now. Okay, so here I've got my beer. Um, this is actually something that's been sitting around for a while. Um, we just I kind of stopped drinking beer because I think I'm allergic to something that's in it. Um, because it makes me my asthma flare up. So these have been sitting in the fridge for quite some time, probably about a year, which makes it perfect for making soap because I'm not going to drink it, so let's mix up with it. But this is a Sam Adams black lager, and black lagers are typically a little bit more stout than like uh, your run-of-the-mill Bud Light. But um, I'm going to just add it to my pan here. I don't have a very big pot here because I don't have, I mean, this is just 12 ounces, so it's not going to flood the pan very high or anything. So let's start this up. All right. I have a gas stove, so <laughs> I always have to be careful with this flame. But I have this set here at about medium-high heat right now just to get it going, but then once it starts to kind of bubble and do its thing, I'm going to turn it way down because otherwise it'll just foam over. It's already starting to foam up some. You can see it kind of... I don't know if you can really tell, but... It's like moving and rising, so you can see that it's, it's heating up pretty good. But I'm gonna let this go for a little bit and then I'll be right back. So while I'm waiting for the beer to cook down, um, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out all my oils and such just so that they're ready whenever um, I need them. Basically with the beer, um, you have to let it cool down before you do anything with it. So I'm cooking it now, but it's gonna be a while before it cools down again and I'll most likely put it into ice cubes. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and measure this stuff out. And my recipe, um, I added coconut oil, palm kernel flakes, and some shea butter. So the coconut oil and the palm kernel flakes should give it some good uh, hardening effects and uh, also give it like more of a bubbly, fluffy um, foam versus the lard, which will just be like a damp foam. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and measure out the palm kernel flakes because they're in flake form. Don't want to knock that over. So they're in flake form, easy to measure. And I'm only adding 5% to the entire batch. So this particular size is only going to be 1.4 ounces. using the same percent of the shea butter. This shea butter that I have is from Essential Depot and it's um, an unrefined shea butter so it still has like kind of a fragrance to it but I'm only adding five percent so yeah and I think it smells pretty good honestly some people hate it but I don't know I guess it depends on where you get it from too. Okay so another 1.4 ounces of shea butter. Just a little bit 
bit more. least not. Now I'm going to go in with my coconut oil, which I'm only putting 30% in here, which is actually kind of a high amount, but uh, in order to counteract some of the effects of the shea butter and the lard, I kind of wanted to over overemphasize the coconut oil. So this is going to have 8.4 ounces in this recipe which calculates to be 30% for what I'm looking for. And this, this coconut oil I got from Amazon, I think. I usually get it from uh, Wholesale Supplies Plus, but usually when I go there, I want to buy more things than I need. So I just got this off of Amazon. And the price for this fluctuates on Amazon too. And I usually have a price range that I like to keep at with coconut oil. Um, and this is a gallon bucket, I guess. And I like to keep it under $20 for a gallon bucket. Um, so just keep that in mind, I guess, if you decide you want to make soap. Because if you go to the store and get their coconut oil there, um, it's going to be super expensive. I think mainly because it's food grade. I wouldn't consider this food grade coconut oil. So, um, that's me personally. I don't know. I don't remember what Amazon says about it. Let me see the label here. Here's the label. Um, I mean, I guess it's saying that it's food grade, but this is a refined coconut oil, so it doesn't have that scent to it. But I, whenever I use coconut oil for food, I prefer it to have that scent to it. All right, now we're going in with the bacon fat. I showed you this before. I had this in the fridge, so it's nice and firm. And I'm going to add, ooh, I may not have enough. Yes, I don't have enough. So I'm going to modify this recipe and I will be right back. Okay, so I adjusted my recipe because I only, it called for 16.8 ounces of bacon fat, but I had to adjust it down because I only had about 10 ounces. So I'm subbing that with canola oil here, which is fine. Kind of sad that I won't have as much. I think my recipe may be too big. And I think it was seven ounces. Okay. And turn the beer off. <clears throat> Excuse me, but you can see it's still smoking there. Um, and the, you know, parts of it have caramelized along the sides. But essentially what I was doing with this here, sorry, was um, forcing it to go flat. Um, and in the process, I'm also going to burn off that alcohol. Because um, when you mix this with lye, you don't want it to mix with the foam, for one, because like I said earlier, it'll explode. Um, but, uh, and there are ways of adding alcohol to soap, but this is not the proper way to do it. So I burned off the alcohol and I burned off the foam and I'm going to actually put these in ice cubes and let it freeze and then we'll go from there. Okay, so now I'm gonna make the lye. Um, <clears throat> I've actually frozen the beer into cubes and uh, I need about nine ounces of liquid. So uh, if this isn't enough, I'm just going to supplement it with some distilled water. I'm going to go ahead and measure this now. Let's see that. 
These are really sticky. Yeah, it's 6.6. .6. Um, so I had 12 ounces of beer and it reduced down by almost half. I'm just going to put about Okay, perfect. And I don't want the beer to burn, which is why I froze it. It's really sticky, so there's a lot of sugar in there. Now, I'm not wearing gloves because I don't have any more. And uh, I just want to be absolutely clear with you that you need to wear gloves when you do this. I, I've been working with this stuff for 15 years or so, so I know how to handle it and I know how to treat myself if I burn myself. So you wear gloves. I need about four ounces. just about that much in here so perfect all right so I'm going to use this like janky spatula that I use only for soap making I don't cook with it or anything so you can see that that lye is already melting the beer really fast because it's it's such a hot reaction and if you make soap with beer, you'll notice that there's a funky smell. Um, that smell goes away. It's just temporary while you have the lye. And the lye, the lye solution itself will have that funky smell until you turn it into soap. But it's like such a nice, creamy, like it almost looks like hot chocolate. <laughs> but knowing what I know that's in here, I definitely don't want to drink this. So it's almost completely mixed in. And one of the things I like to add to my lye solution for every batch of soap is some silk fiber. Um, it just tends to give the soap such a nice silky feel and it dissolves really well in this caustic hot solution. It looks like a cotton ball, but it'll dissolve eventually. Not right this second. It takes a few minutes. But uh, So that's one thing I like to add. And the other thing I like to add to my lye solution is sodium lactate. So what this does is it adds just a touch of firmness to the bar that we might lose from the lard. So um, <clears throat> I just fill a little capful. Doesn't take much. If you put too much in there, then your bar becomes brittle, and I don't want that either. So. And it might take a little bit longer for that silk to dissolve because these are ice cubes. And I can tell that the solution isn't terribly hot because I used ice. But my lye is dissolved. I can still hear some ice cubes in there. So we'll give this some time to work its magic. The silk will dissolve uh, because it's caustic, but it dissolves faster when it's hot. <clears throat> so. Since this isn't terribly hot, it's going to take some time. But look at how creamy that is. It's like awesome. So, in case you're, you can't tell, because our lye solution is so dark like this, it's going to impart this color to the soap. Um, granted, it won't be this intensely brown, but it's going to be brown. And um, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to do an in the mold. Um, hot process or not and if I do it it will darken and it would it might eventually become this color because there are sugars in here 
and the sugars uh, become obviously more brown with the more heat that you add. Um, and the beer itself was already brown to begin with. Um, it had like the toasted malts and stuff like that, which, you know, see that's, <laughs> that's what my silk looks like. But anyway, so what I'm going to do with this is I like my lye to be the same, to be, well, room temperature whenever I use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it into this handy dandy bottle, which not many people have, but, um, I used to work in a place where they would, um, expire stuff and they end up just pitching it or, you know, so I was like, man, that's a nice glass bottle. Why pitch it? I'll take it. So not, not many people would have something like this, but if you can find like a Pyrex container, preferably something that doesn't have like one of those plastic lids or anything, if you want to store your lye, um, bottles like these are preferred, um, Oop, there goes the silk. Um, if it's a cool solution like this, it's not as big a deal, but um, a lot of times I mix my light directly in this, which, uh, oops, there's some more. Um, and by doing that, it gets really, really hot, and since this is Pyrex, it's okay. But if it were regular glass, it could break. And then you're talking caustic lye all over yourself and all over the place. And it works fast. It'll like corrode stuff pretty fast. So yeah, just safety first. Um, like I said, I've been dealing with this for a very, very long time. I know how to handle it. <clears throat> Be very, very careful. And you can see there's a little on the lip. I'm just gonna and plus I have cats so I ha also have to be very careful about how I do this stuff around them because they're really curious little creatures and they'll get into stuff and I don't want to hurt my babies okay so that is my beer lie all right and it's a very nice touchable temperature but I like this to be room temperature it's still warm not hot though so anyway um, next thing I'm going to have to do is melt my oils well, I'm gonna let this go to room temperature melt my oils and make my soap so I will be back all right so here I have my oils melted um, it's only semi transparent probably due to the shea butter that's in there um, it's currently at about 100 and 40 degrees ish so um, I'm gonna have to let it cool down just a tad but uh, here's my lye solution that we made um, you can see it looks like really dark coffee but my silk has dissolved and um, you know it looks it's ready to use it's room temperature um, yeah so anyway it does look like dark coffee so with that being said um, it's going to impart its own color to the soap um, so I'm not going to color it. I'm not going to put anything in it. Um, and it's also going to impart a, a slight, um, fragrance of its own. So what I'm going to be using is, um, this oatmeal milk and honey fragrance. Um, it's kind of a, um, it's a warmer bakery type fragrance and, um, it's, it's really popular with, you know, my circle of friends, but, uh, Anyway, so that is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to let this cool for a little bit and uh, be right back.
I was pretty sure that the beer or the lard was going to speed up my trace, but nope. But that's okay. Um, this is still, even though I mixed it for quite some time with the, the mixer, it's still considered light trace. But I'm not going to do anything fancy with this. I'm just going to pour it in my mold and just let it be a regular non-artisanal bar of soap. It looks like I'm going to have a little bit extra, which I can put in my smaller mold. But for now, um, actually what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put it in the um, oven. And uh, this was dripping with oil. I probably shouldn't have used this, but it'll, it'll reabsorb. Um, I'm going to put this in the oven. The oven is set at 170 right now. Um, I'll put it in there probably about 10 minutes and then I'll turn off the oven and just leave it in there. So I'm going to force it to go through gel phase. So this color that you see, which is a rich caramel color, it's going to actually get a little bit darker, maybe closer to like the remnants in the bottom of this here um, because of the gel phase. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do now and uh, we shall return for the cutting. All right, time to cut our loaf. Um, <clears throat> this is just a broken cutting board that I'm using. Um, <clears throat> it came out of the mold beautifully. It's got real nice crisp lines, um, which means that I didn't struggle with it. It sat in the mold for about 24 hours, I'd say. Um, but you can see, like, there are some darker spots in there. It's uh, probably where the soap got a little bit hotter. Sometimes I've seen it where the soap might have um, kind of slow boiled in there. So you'll see like kind of some bubbly spots. But yeah, so anyway, let's cut her up. I don't use any kind of measuring method. I just cut it and it cuts beautifully like a real firm chunk of cheese and um, uh, one of the things that a lot of people get when they make soap and they do it in the mold like that like I did where they heated it up um, sometimes they get an incomplete gel phase where there's like a circle in the middle but if you look at this soap you can see that it's completely gelled which is like awesome um, really happy about that looks beautiful Smells really good. I don't even smell any of that residual beer. Um, but clearly, it imparted its color. So, let's cut the rest of these. So, this last piece is thinner than the rest. So, I'll give this to my husband or something. Um, <clears throat> All these I will list for sale on my Etsy site, which is linked in the description. Um, they smell really good. And uh, they do produce a lot of foam. And I'll show you a picture of just the residue that I washed out of my um, mold. But remember I had a little bit extra too. This is that. Um, let's see. When I was... Playing with it yesterday, it still seemed pretty soft, so it might still be kind of, yeah, I can feel it on the bottom, it's pretty soft. Um, a lot of times with um, soaps that you don't force to go through gel phase, they stay kind of soft for some time. Um, they'll eventually harden. Um, I think I also kind of may have screwed up the soap when I was playing with it yesterday because, there we go. Because I dented the sides, so it like didn't want to release from the mold. But you can see there, it's it's kind of still kind of like play-doh like. Um, it's also not as deep in color because it didn't go through the gel phase. Um, I'll just keep these for myself. I'll let them harden. It'll take them a lot longer to harden than something like this. Something like this maybe um, will be good for use in maybe a couple weeks, whereas this will probably be better in like two months. So. But anyway, so that is that.